I love the idea behind this phone and I wish we had something similar today. This is the Nokia Asha 503 dual sim, the very last Asha device released by Nokia. It was supposed to be a device that bridges the gap between feature phones and smartphones, and it has plenty of cool tricks up its sleeve. And let's start with the unboxing experience. Man, I really missed the old school blue Nokia boxes, and this box is so tiny, just like the phone inside. So at the top you've got the phone, which is in green here, but of course you can get it in multiple different colors, including yellow, blue, and even red. Under that are the product booklets, a charger, a wired headset, which is red for some reason here, and a charging brick. So the hardware of the Nokia 503 is insanely cool in my opinion. Nokia took their trademark polycarbonate unibody design, put it inside a see-through plastic shell, and then fused them together. And voila, you have a phone that looks like it's inside an ice cube. I don't think I've ever seen another phone attempt such a design fusion. And the front actually uses Gorilla Glass 2 for protection with only one capacitive back button under the display. There's a headphone jack at the top as well as a micro USB port for charging. And on the right you've got the classic Nokia setup with the volume rocker keys and a power button. The device looks super minimal but in a very playful way. Nokia simply made the best hardware across every price point. Objectively of course. On the back you've got a 5 megapixel fixed focus camera, so that means it doesn't have autofocus. You also have LED flash and this knob at the bottom which can be used to open the back shell of the device. When I say shell I really mean it because this isn't just a small back plate as you're practically removing the whole body of the device off it. And it's one of those things that I really love about old school Nokia devices. Replacing the battery, switching between SIM cards and even adding an additional memory without requiring any tools at all. How ingenious is that? And the best part is you wouldn't even know that the back shell was removable because of how cohesive the entire design is. Another clever design element is that the knob also acts as the device's loudspeaker. And honestly, I was so pleasantly surprised by how good the quality of the loudspeaker is in terms of loudness and even clarity. I think it puts most modern budget smartphones to shame, really. So let's power the Asha 503 on. And now you can see that 3-inch QVGA display in its full glory. Of course I'm kidding, as this screen isn't really great by any means. But it does the job. For you number nerds out there, the resolution is at 240 by 320 pixels. The device runs on Nokia's Asha software platform. It's technically not a smartphone operating system, but it has plenty of smart features. And the best part for me personally is that it was greatly inspired by Mego Harmaton, the operating system that was found on the best phone of all time, objectively of course, the Nokia N9. You can clearly see the inspiration from the icons and the fact that you can use swipe gestures to navigate throughout the UI. And there are also plenty of design elements that are scattered all around that are clearly inspired by Mego. So your main home screen is the app grid which you can navigate by scrolling vertically. And then swiping to the right reveals what Nokia calls fast lane. Here you have all your notifications, your calendar events, and your recently opened apps. And to go backwards inside apps, all you have to do is press on the back button that's under the display. But if you want to get out of apps, all you have to do is swipe from the edge of the display to scroll the app away and go back to your home screen. And it actually works incredibly well, and it's fairly smooth too. I'm pleasantly surprised by how fast this device is. Did I mention that the Nokia Asha 503 also has glance screen? Well, it does. You can see all the notifications and the time shown in a very low power mode when the display is supposed to be off. Yeah, this thing rocks. The mad lads at Nokia implemented this on LCD displays too, like here. And you can power on the display by double tapping, which doesn't work very reliably on my unit here for some reason. Swiping from the top down reveals all your quick toggle settings. Things such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and 3G connectivity. And by the way, the Asha 503 was the only device in the Asha lineup with a touchscreen that actually supported 3G. So that was its key selling point and Nokia even built their own app store for this operating system. So you had access to apps such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, WeChat, and many more. It even came preloaded with a lot of different games. And naturally, all the basics were present and performed quite well. So you have things such as the photo gallery, the music player, a calendar app, note-taking app, and so on. 
Even the keyboard pleasantly surprised me despite me using it on such a tiny display. Multitasking on the other hand is limited, understandably, but still possible. You just didn't have a very clear way of knowing which apps were open in the background and which weren't. In my opinion, the Nokia Asha 503 is smarter than any KaiOS device that I've recently used. And it's definitely leagues smarter than the S30 Plus platform that we find on Nokia's most recent feature phones. I find it to be the perfect blend between being simple and capable. And I really wish we had something similar to this idea today. The thing I love the most about it though is that it wasn't designed to be addictive like our modern smartphones. It's not trying to suck you in and sell your data to the highest bidder for advertising. Just to give you the right tools to make your life easier. And the price of this at launch was around $100, which was a segment that Android absolutely Absolutely sucked in back then. This just ran circles around its competitors when it comes to speed and smoothness for its time. Though naturally it isn't exactly the smoothest thing that you'll ever see. Actually I think $100 Android devices that are released today still suck in this specific aspect. Anyway, I want to hear from you. What do you think about the Nokia Asha 503? Do you like the idea of having a phone that slots between feature phones and smartphones? Share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel, and I shall see you in the next one.